If you're looking for a factory-built pre-runner that's every bit as home at the Starbucks drive-thru as it is on the Baja 1000, then the Gen 1 Ford Raptor might be the truck for you. Between the Fox Racing Shocks, BFG KO235s, factory beadlock wheels, and the 6.2 liter Boss V8, the Gen 1 Ford Raptor is more than capable in stock form. So, do you really need to do anything to it? Well, probably not if you're okay with looking like every single other Raptor that rolled off the showroom floor from 2010 to 2014. No, God! No, God, please, no, no! But here at Three Piece, we're all about making your truck your own, so that's what we're gonna help you do. Thank you! Before we get into the real meat of the video here, drop a like, comment, and subscribe on this video, and let me know down below what car you wanna see us do next. If you've already got a Raptor that's got aftermarket wheels on it, or any truck, or any car, or anything with three or four wheels, drop it in our vehicle gallery on our website. So if you've got a Raptor or any other truck or a car or anything with four wheels or three wheels or heck, probably even two wheels, go ahead and add it to our vehicle gallery on our website and show it off for everyone. Plus get entered into our monthly fitment battles for your chance to win huge prizes. Let's get into the basic info about the Gen 1 Raptor. Well, the Raptor is the last vehicle made by Ford's special vehicle team or SVT and you know they had to go out with a bang by making this Baja capable pre-runner truck straight out of the box. The Raptor didn't pull any punches with its setup, running a 17 by eight and a half OEM beadlock wheel, or there was a non-beadlock wheel, but like no one optioned it and you don't really want it anyway, so ignore that. My truck came with it, you know, bit bad spec. Either way, they're 17 by 8.5 plus 34 for a 6 inch backspacing. Tires are BF Goodwrench 31570 17s, or 35s in other terms, and these are the KO2s, which are fantastic off-roading tire that, by the way, you can pick up at 3 pieceus The lug pattern on these trucks is a 6 by 135 which is a pretty unique kind of only Ford type of bolt pattern, but that doesn't mean we don't have a ton of wheel options for you. With our full in-house machine shop, we can drill any 6x139 wheel to 6x135, or most manufacturers make their wheels in an original 6x135. On my truck, I'm running the Kokoro OR, drilled to 6x135, and that just goes to show you that there's a ton of different options for these trucks. If you have the optional beadlock wheels found on the 2013 and 2014s only, they're pretty cool, except the only thing you have to do is fit them with the optional Ford Racing beadlock ring upgrade to make them into a true beadlock. From the factory, these are a simulated beadlock, which is a topic we'll cover more in other videos. The only downside on these wheels is gonna be the offset. Most aftermarket stuff runs an offset anywhere from like a plus 12 uh, down to like a higher negative, like negative 12, whereas these are that eight and a half plus 34, and they are pretty inset into the fender. Besides spacers, Aftermarket wheels are the only way to get a little bit of that aggressive poke that you want on a truck like so, this. So, the reason you're probably watching this video, the recommended aftermarket wheel and tire spec. Well, these trucks come with 17 inch wheels, as I said previously, and guess what? Staying 17 is probably the way to go. We recommend 17 or 18. You can go to a 20, but you're gonna lose a lot of off-road capability. And in terms of offset, you're gonna want something around a plus zero. Now, as far as width goes, there's a lot of debate here as to whether a skinnier wheel or a wider wheel is gonna perform better for your application. This depends on whether you're driving on sand, mud, or again, just the Starbucks drive-through. Personally, I run a 17 by nine plus 12 on my truck, and I think it looks and fits great, although I wish the front had a little bit more poke. Something around a 17 by nine plus six, maybe a 17 by nine and a half plus zero. Any of these are gonna give you a, uh, you know, aggressive look where you can still run that 35 and not have any rubbing or scrubbing issues when you're turning. There's also no trimming needed for a setup like this, so that's gonna be a good barometer for as far as how you wanna modify your truck. There are certain advantages to certain wheel widths depending on the type of terrain that you're on, and if this is something that interests you, let us know down in the comments and we'll make a separate video talking about different wheel and tire setups for different types of off-road driving. Again, if you go with a safe setup, anything in that 17 by nine range, running like a factory size, like 35 inch tire, the Raptor's more than capable out of the box and you really don't need to do much to it, whether you're into rock crawling or hitting the dune. Now, when it comes to changing up the wheels and tires on your truck, you might need to make additional modifications. And Ford thought of this from the factory. On those Fox racing shocks that I talked about previously, you have what's called a perch adjustment. Now this is gonna be for the front, and the truck comes on what's called the low perch. This is gonna give you the best ride quality, but makes the front of the truck sit lower than the rear. Now something you'd have to do on most other trucks is purchase a leveling kit, usually a small strut spacer for the front to bring that front and rear level. But Ford thought of this, and most Raptor owners go with what's called a mid perch mod, which is gonna bring your truck 
level front and rear, and is also gonna make it quite a bit taller in the front, which is a great, very aggressive look. The high perch setting, while doable, is not recommended, giving you about two and a half inches of lift and making your truck look like it's got the Carolina squat going on. There are some advantages to doing the high perch mod. It is gonna wear your shocks faster, and generally, if you're gonna do this, you already know why you're doing this, and you're not here watching me tell you in this video what it is. If you go with a true 35 inch tire, however, because the KO2s are like a 34 point, 34 point not 35. If you go with the True 35, something like the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss AT is a tire that we recommend for that. You do want to do the mid-perch mod just to give you that little bit of additional clearance so you don't have any scrubbing issues when you're turning or any issues under full stock compression. In our full article on the Gen 1 F-150 SVT Raptor, we tell you in depth how to do the mid-perch mod, and I highly recommend you check it out. I'm gonna have the link to that down in the video description, and it gives you everything I'm telling you, but in a nice guide format that you can refer back to. The mid-perch mod is highly recommended, and is not gonna wear your shocks out that much faster, but it is gonna make your truck look and perform a lot better. Now, when it comes to further suspension upgrades, with these trucks, really, the depth of your wallet is the only limiting factor. There's simple upgrades, like a leveling kit from Eibach, which is gonna bring your front and rear level, although the mid-perch mod kinda of takes care of that, all the way up to doing some crazy long travel, aftermarket control arms, the whole nine yards with something like an Icon 3.0 or one of their bigger Icon, I don't know, you tell us, watch the video, tell us, sell it in the comments. One of their more complicated long travel suspension systems. It all depends on what you use the truck for. For most people, you're never gonna reach the performance limits of the factory Fox shocks, but it's good to know that there are a ton of upgrades out there for your truck. What we don't want to see you do on a Raptor is running some big 12-inch Skyjacker lift kit because that is going to destroy the performance. There's lots of other trucks to do that on. This is one where you want to retain that kind of suspension, travel, desert, pre-runner type setup on, and the factory suspension is 9 out of 10 times good enough to do that. Some of the things that we do see people do in these trucks is, like I said earlier, running that mid-perch mod and running like some Deaver's leaf springs in the rear. That's going to give you probably the, the best OEM plus style suspension that you can get without breaking the bank. Now, when it comes to the bodywork to fit different wheels and tires on these trucks, you really don't have to do much. The F-150 Raptor is giant. It's as wide as an H1 Hummer. Don't believe me? Look it up. So for the most part, no trimming or body panel replacement is necessary on these. The factory flares are plenty wide enough to fit any wheel and tire setup that you generally want. Now, there are some fenders, people call them like plus ones or plus twos, for the front that give it that more aggressive pre-runner style look. And depending on the size of your real entire setup, you may want to add additional clearance in the bumper area as well. There's lots of aftermarket bumpers that do this, but again, OEM is generally, generally going to be good enough for most of you. As kind of a general rule, if you go up to a 37, that's when you're going to have to start considering more aggressively modifying your truck to not bottom out that 37-inch tire when your suspension is at full compression. If you're never going to do anything other than hit the Starbucks drive through you generally don't need to, one, put 37s on your truck, but if you do put 37s on your truck, you don't need to modify anything else because you're not using the suspension to its full travel. Now, a lot of this goes out the window if you go with that bigger 20-inch wheel and tire setup I talked about earlier, but again, this video is more for people who are looking to modify their Raptor in a more traditional sense, running that 17 or 18 inch wheel around that nine inch width with the uh, you know plus 12 to negative 12 offset and 35 inch tires so now that we've got the basics down on these trucks let's take a look at some raptor builds and see what works and what doesn't we'll start with 35 inch tires on the stock wheels if you're getting new wheels and tires or just new tires 35s are a nice modest upgrade starting with some factory option svt beadlock wheels with 35 inch tires normally these would be a plus 34 offset but this truck is running a one and three quarter inch spacer, which works out to an effective offset of negative 10, giving it just that little bit of poke that makes it look really aggressive. This truck also has two inches of leveling in the front, and there's no rubbing at all whatsoever, even with aggressive off-roading. Here's a good look at the poke that you're gonna get with one and three quarter inch spacers on factory spec wheels, about one to two inches. If you wanna stay with factory wheels, high quality hub-centric spacers, purchased by the way from 3piece.us, are a great option for you. Next one we're gonna take a look at is this 2013 Crew Cab. Now the Raptor came in two cab variations, the Super Crab and the Super Crew. They are generally very similar, with the only difference being a slight payload and towing capacity difference. But in terms of wheel fitment, they're effectively the same. So you'll see us refer to the two trucks interchangeably throughout the rest of the video. This one has nine inch wide aftermarket wheels from Fittipaldi, backspacing being the same as before. However, they poke out an additional half inch. The truck also has a two inch leveling kit. Even with no trimming on this truck, there's no rubbing involved. This is another simple setup that's easily gonna handle those 35. So now the big question that I mentioned earlier about 20 inch wheels, and if the Raptor Forum sees this video, I know they're gonna throw tomatoes at me through the YouTube video. Sure, 
You can. Damn you, old man! And this 2013 is running some. But it rubs a little bit at full lock. Take account as well that this truck is running the mid-perch mod on factory suspension. You could eliminate rubbing with body panel or trimming modifications, and if you're gonna run 20s, we'd recommend that you do these modifications. However, bear in mind that running a 20-inch wheel is gonna severely limit your off-road capability. In my opinion, if you buy a Raptor to run 20s on it, you're either trying to piss off the purists. Just look at it. Oh, uh, would you look at that? I mean, just get a look at that. Which is kind of funny, to be honest with you. Or you just kind of bought the wrong truck. You might as well buy a base model F-150, lift it 12 inches and throw some forces on there, which is also a super cool look. Probably just not for this specific truck. Now they do make 35s and 20s that do look and fit pretty good, but again, kind of just barking up the wrong tree there. So 37 inch tires on the Raptor, which is another reason I know you're watching this video because you've got that cart queued up, you've got those Icon wheels, you've got those 37 inch KO2s in there and you're going, man, fuck it, I'm gonna have the biggest Raptor around. Well, you can, but it's gonna take you quite a bit of work to eliminate any rubbing or scrubbing with that wheel and tire setup. However, if you wanna put in the time and money, your rig is gonna look badass. Badass. It is badass. Starting with this 2011, this is as close to stock as you're gonna be able to get while running a 37 inch tire. This one's got mid-perch suspension with revalved shocks, which can affect the rebound and compression rate, which can affect how that's going to, you know, handle that larger tire. There's a lot of ifs in that. This is also running a custom RPG bumper, which is gonna change the amount of clearance you have when turning the steering wheel. This in turn means that you're not going to potentially have some of the rubbing issues that you would have running a stock bumper. This also has some trimming the inner fender and still has some rubbing. The truck is running Method 312s in matte black. However, as a side note, if you do choose to go with methods, the 304 doesn't fit over the factory caliper, so do your research accordingly. If you're looking for methods or a similar wheel, I would definitely check out some of the options we have on our website. Personally, I'd recommend Icon for a similar look. This next one's gonna be a similar setup, but with the shocks adjusted to the highest perch. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you need this mod, you're gonna know you need this mod. Well, this guy knew he needed this mod. So this gives it a little bit of negative rake, or as I called it earlier, the Carolina squat. However, this one looks great on these 1552 Turbo Mac HDs. However, it is a simulated beadlock ring, which if you're gonna run a 37 inch tire, you kinda want a real beadlock at that point. It's kind of a weird decision, but you know, let people do what they want with their trucks, right? Wanna go with a lower offset on your truck? Well, Fiberworks makes some badass front fenders to give you two and a half inches of additional clearance. This massively, massively assists with clearance for those 37 inch tires and gives you a 1.5 inch higher radius on your fender, allowing you to not run into as many rubbing or scrubbing issues and certainly not the same issues under suspension compression. This is also gonna let you run some super aggressive offsets as you can see on this 2014, running a mid perch setup and the OEM front bumper retained. When you run that bigger fender, you're gonna have a little bit more clearance for that wheel and tire setup. So the last one, and the one that I personally think is the coolest, is this trophy truck style build. This 2012 Super Crew Cab has all the bells and whistles, including a full RPG bolt-in suspension kit, ADV fiberglass plus two fenders, and as a result, tons of clearance for any wheel and tire setup they wanna run with that more aggressive suspension and body modification. The wheels are zero offset, however, the bolt-in kit increases the track width of the truck three inches, so that zero offset's gonna sit actually significantly further out than it would on a stock truck. Naturally, they finish it off with an RPG front bumper, and I think this truck looks badass. Here in Southern California, trophy truck pre-runner is kind of the look to go for, and I definitely can appreciate what this guy's done with his build. So, to wrap it all up, unlike most trucks you're gonna get, where from the factory, the stock wheel and tire setup looks like shit. The Gen 1 Raptor really doesn't need much to look good, and even the factory wheel and tire setup looks great on most trucks. However, if you're like me, or anyone else here, or if you're watching this video, probably you, you know that stock is never good enough. So if you're looking for some aftermarket wheels for your Raptor, a couple brands that I'd steer you towards are gonna be Icon, which is really cool with their uh, semi-beadlock technology that they have. We'll talk about this more in another video. Black Rhino, KMC, Method, or MVX Off-Road. Any of these are gonna be great options for your Raptor and are gonna significantly upgrade the look and performance of your truck. So if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment, go to our gallery, upload your vehicle, car, truck, SUV, I don't really care. I just wanna see more of your cool builds and roast them in another video. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.